This is an image of a crocodilian with what looks like a flipper for a tail. Posts online have claimed this is anywhere from a genetic deformity to evolution in the making. The truth is actually much cooler. This caiman regrew its tail. For decades, it was not considered common knowledge that some crocodilian species could regenerate parts of their tail. However, this is something that has dated back historically in their evolutionary lineage. Shown here is an extinct species of crocodilomorph that once lived during the Jurassic, and while it was not related, it looked similar to today's gharials. In one fossil specimen that had a total length of 3 meters, the tail tip was found to be strangely different compared to the rest of the fossil. Not only did the tail appear deformed, the last 12 centimeters were described as being dark and made of cartilage. This type of weird tail tip is exactly what is seen in today's crocodilian species for their regenerated tails. When looking at the regenerated portion of a crocodilian's tail, it is visibly distinct from the rest of the tail, with two main details to generally keep in mind. First, the regenerated portion has small, irregular scales, which are much different from the original. Second, the scales are often much darker compared to the rest of the tail. It must also be noted that structurally, the regenerated portions are much different compared to the rest of the tail. These new tail tips only consist of connective tissue, and instead of true vertebrae being present, a rod made of cartilage is there in its place. As for nerves, these tails do have them for sensory purposes, but not for motor function. This essentially means the new tail is a non-movable paddle for the animal. This makes these new regenerated tails much simpler compared to other animals with the ability to regenerate. The other interesting fact is that the cases that have been documented indicate crocodilians can't regenerate their whole tail. In one study focusing on American alligators, it was indicated the regenerated tails only made up 6 to 18% of the animal's total body length, indicating only a third of the tail's true length can be regrown. In addition, regeneration seems to be only possible in younger individuals. The animals that were found with regenerated tails seem to be only up to 5 feet or so in length. However, that's not to say individuals a little bit bigger can't regenerate too. In fact, a few months ago, a trapping agent I work with, Shaw Grigsby, actually caught one 7-foot nuisance alligator with a piece of regenerated tail. With this being an interesting find, I decided to examine this gear for myself a few days after it was caught. All right, so I'm out here today with my boss, Captain Ron Sanderson, and uh, we're actually gonna check out an alligator that's regrown actually a section of its tail. Ron, have you seen any alligators with regrown tails before? I have never seen one that actually has been regrown like this, and I've caught thousands of alligators, and you know, I've seen hundreds that have had their tails bobbed in different ways, but I have never seen a gator that has had a regrowth. Yeah, and uh, just, a little bit of context as well. Ron's been working with alligators for over 40 years, so he definitely knows what he's talking about. Um, I've seen one other time with an alligator that's regrown a small section of its tail, but it was only like less than an inch long. This is the biggest I've actually seen in person. This will be fun, and uh, we're gonna pull it out, and uh, we're gonna check it out. When we were measuring the gator, the snout pelvis length of the alligator was found to be 45.5 inches in length. And given the fact total body length is usually double this, this makes the gator roughly 91 inches or 7 feet 7 inches if he had a complete tail. The alligator's tail measured 38.5 inches in length with 4 inches of this being regenerated. This means the gator still had about 7 inches still missing. While it is possible this alligator could have still been regenerating its tail, I personally think this regeneration happened when it was younger and this is as much as this gator is going to regrow. As to why crocodilians only seem to regrow their tails in their younger years, we need to understand a couple things. First, when a crocodilian is starting out in life, it's towards the bottom of the food chain. It is basically food for anything. Therefore, if a young crocodilian were to lose part of its tail, being able to regrow it and have a relatively complete tail to swim is much more essential for survival. Secondly, and on the other side of this, think about where most crocodilians are when they're older. They're towards the top of the food chain and their ability to hunt and survive drastically increases. In this case, needing to regrow a portion of a tail isn't as important. Keep in mind too that regrowing a body part requires resources from your body. So if your body doesn't need to regrow something, it doesn't need to waste those resources. The best example of this I can think of is this American alligator I worked with in 2023. He was 9 feet on the dot but with a complete tail, he would have been a bit under 11 feet in length. Although a large chunk of his tail was gone, his body condition was great, showing how he didn't necessarily need a full tail to survive. After saying all this, let's get back to the accurate caiman with the flipper. 
One of the many issues with these regenerated tails is that they often become deformed and don't look like the normal pointed, laterally compressed tails crocodilians have. This picture here is the worst I've personally seen of these regenerated tails. The other thing that must be noted too is that given the fact alligators swing their tails side to side instead of up and down, this flipper is essentially useless. However, the one interesting detail looking at this picture is that the regrown tail looks smooth instead of scaly. When I found one paper of an American crocodile, it was stated its regenerated tail tip was smooth. Perhaps the smooth tail tip is an early stage of the regenerative process, meaning this flipper could get a bit bigger over time. As of now, it seems the species publicly listed as having this ability to regenerate parts of their tail are the American alligator, spectacled caiman, yakare caiman, smooth-fronted caiman, black caiman, American crocodile, Nile crocodile, and Johnston's crocodile. No species in the Gario family have been found with this trait. However, I wouldn't be surprised if all modern crocodilians could do this. Along the lines of these weird tails, there has also been the thought that possibly one crocodilian species could be dropping its tail tips on purpose, like some lizards do. I found a post by a user named Manusukas, who also did some artwork for my book, tweet out, quote, Apparently during a study carried out in the Orinoco Delta, a Paleosuchus specimen that was being captured released parts of its tail up to three times. This is definitely something new if this is the real cause. While this is not confirmed by any means, this is something that would be interesting if true. Along the same lines of regeneration, there has been at least one example of decent jaw regeneration for crocodilians. In 1977, an eight-year-old mugger crocodile exhibited partial regeneration of the upper jaw at the Bronx Zoo. In 1977, a Temistema bit the young mugger and the resulting injury include the excision of a 70 mm long, 40 mm wide, 20 mm thick section of the lateral right maxillary bone. The only treatment that was applied to the injury was an ointment to prevent bacterial infections. The exposed tooth sockets from the bite naturally sealed, and a tooth that was ripped off regenerated with even greater size compared to the original. Spongy bone and epidermal tissue was extensively regenerated in 90 days, and the damage seemed to be nearly healed by 45 months. Scar tissue and dark scales were present, much like the tails. While regeneration of body parts is an interesting aspect of crocodilian biology, it is still an aspect of their lives we know little about. Only time will tell just how extensive our knowledge of this interesting trait for the species goes. Big thank you to my boss Ron for helping out measuring this nuisance gator. If you guys want to see more of his nuisance gator captures, check out his channels, links in the description. So many of you know about the current study I am working on about 20 foot plus crocodilians. Heck, the topic is pretty much the main thing I'm known for on here, but I need your help. I am finding some really interesting information pertaining to certain head measurements for at least a saltwater crocodile. However, I am currently working with a small sample size. What I am looking for are detailed measurements from skulls or heads of saltwater crocodiles that came from animals at least 10 feet or 3 meters long. I will have my email and Instagram in the description, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Thank you all for watching. To learn more about the animals you just saw, buy the second edition of What We Get Wrong About Crocodilians. It examines claims of giant crocodiles, a World War II massacre, regenerating tails, alligators in the sewers, their record land speeds, and more. The book examines claims many, including experts, get wrong about these animals, and the second edition includes updated information, pictures, and more. Buy What We Get Wrong About Crocodilians, the second edition, in physical or digital formats. Link in bio, comments, or description to buy.